Mark, we'll take it up at the end of service, okay, if you don't mind. And uh, that way we'll just we'll get that done. Um, that's, what I preached, that's what I preached this morning. I got it somewhere. There it is. Bingo. We got it. Uh, we're going to preach like it's in, we're not in the gates of hell. <laughs> Jesus help me. Uh, I know you, you got some of you ladies out there freezing. I get it. I really don't get it. I get it. I'm just like. Dude, y'all need some extra, extra two shots or something. <laughs> that, is just awesome. <laughs> that really changed the direction of this temperature. All right, if you have your Bible, turn to First Pete. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. And uh, I promise you, I'm gonna keep it real long tonight. Uh, just, uh, I had a long week. I mean, I had a long week. Amen. It was long and uh, tiresome, hard week, and uh, um, just. With the death of Buffy and then stuff that's going on, it was just it's hard, tough week. And uh, someone just texted me like that. I'm not in church. And so uh, I wonder if we have church on Sunday. I don't know. All right, all right. First Peter chapter two verse nine. Thank you. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy generation, holy nation. Sorry, a peculiar people. How many have ever heard the scripture preached? Yes. Yep. Have ever read this scripture nine thousand four hundred eighteen times? Nineteen now. Okay, and so I'm saying, I procure your people that you may that you show forth the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into what? His marvelous light. His marvelous light. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Cool. I love that verse. Who are you? I have preached who are you to this church until I'm nauseated. It's their, their fault. You know why? Because today they said we need to change our mindset. <laughs> so, God begins to deal with me. Because I'm back there in the sound booth, and Lisa <laughs> slapped me in the face. We need to change our mindset. Maybe not Lisa. Maybe it was the Spirit of the Lord through this. Okay? Because something has to change. Something's got to click, folks. Something has got to... Mama, you can't be that girl. You can't. You cold, too? I'm about to, put, I'm about to take my shirt off. Okay. This, Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> All right. Quit. Okay. But something's got to click. Somewhere, somehow, you've got to come out of the small church mentality into a world global reaching the lost mentality. So I, I've got to get that through you somehow. I've got to get it. Somehow it's got to click. Somehow it has to not just be a little family church, which I love, but I despise at the same time. And the reason, the reason, the reason being is when it's family church, you don't let people in very easily. But when it's global, it's like, hey, everybody come on, let's go. Somehow we have got to make that switch. Did it work? I need a, what's, what was that, that, that sailor commercial with a switch? I need one of those. I need a switch. Boost. Who are you? You're a rogue. I know, the, I know he's talking to Israel. I know he's talking to Israel. I get it. But you're a chosen generation. How many feel like you're chosen today? Amen. I'm chosen. Why? I'm here. I'm saved. I'm gloriously saved. I didn't have to be, but God saved me and, and chose me. Amen. Why? I don't know. Amen. Why? Why is it that God chose you today? Why is it that you're saved and your neighbor's not? Why is it you're saved and your cousin's not? Why is it you're saved and your mother's not? What made you so special? I'm a chosen generation. 
Yeah. I'm a royal priesthood. Thank you, Lord. I'm a holy nation. I'm a peculiar person. Doesn't mean weird. Yes. Means I'm different. Yes. Yes. That you should show forth the praises of Him who have called you out of darkness into what? His. That should be capitalized. His marvelous light. He had it going on and he knew what was up. He just knew what was going on with it. He knew. In, in Philippians 4.13, somebody quote that for me. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He gives me the ability to do things. All things, all things, all things. Not some things, but all things. How many things? All. All but what? All. Oh. I can do all things but kick the butt out, right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am not limited to what you say I can do. I am limited to what I say I can do. I am limited by my own and limitations. That's not further in the sermon, so I'll get there in a minute. First John 3 and 2, somebody quote that for me. You ought to know it. Love it or worship above all things, and I may prosper being in health as I soul. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. That's the next one. Look how he says, I'm sorry. Look, now we are the sons of God. I'm sorry, I misquoted it. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I told the next, it's the next one. I got, I jumped in it. Yeah, you were right, you were right. Okay. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Or not. God's not sexist. He sees neither male nor female. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. How is he? What is God? Spirit, thank you. What does God look like? Spirit. Who are you? I'm a son of God. I am a spirit in a flesh body. My flesh looks like Bob and Lois Nance, but my spirit looks like him. You with me? That's why God's neither black, white, brown, yellow, green. He is a spirit. Hello? He is a spirit. He is not red and yellow, black and white. They're precious in his eyes. Jesus looks around the world. He's not a black Jesus. He's not a blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus. He's a spirit. And just because he dwells in us and we look like our parents, our spirit looks like God. He's, we are made in the image of God. Does that make sense to anybody but me? Okay. All right. Okay. Keep going. You have to believe. In the God in you. The problem is, you believe that, Lisa said it so wonderfully this morning. The problem is, we believe God will do it for them, but not for them. She said it perfectly this morning. We believe God will do it for David and Lisa, but not like a Naomi, not Jeff. Because we limit who God is inside of us. And we have got to believe in the God who believes in us. And who is in us and who dwells in us. We have to believe in the God in you. You have got to believe that God has somehow magically, whatever, changed your life. He has spiritually changed your life. He has taken you from this point to this point and chosen you and called you and he made you a, a royal priesthood, a, a peculiar people, a, a generation that has been called out. And you have to got you've got to believe that, or else you'll always be limited by where you think God can take you. Jesus. You can't limit yourself. 
And not limit what God wants to do in you or through you. What? How many limit yourself? I do all the time. Listen. I'm preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to the choir. Okay? Why? Because I don't do everything right either. And I limit myself. Oh, I'm not educated enough. Think that all the time. I'm not educated enough. I need to know more. I don't pray enough. I don't fast near enough, as you can tell. I don't. I don't do this enough. I don't do that enough. God, you can't use me in that capacity because uh, I'm me, I guess. My dad was a wonderful man, but my dad self sabotaged himself. What do you mean he's also? He would he would limit himself. <clears throat> My dad had tremendous art ability. Wonderful artist. Wonderful painter. You don't know that. Because he never let anybody see it. Why? Wasn't good enough. He's not good enough. Somebody's better than him. My dad was a fantastic. My dad, for y'all that don't know, had a ceramic shop. And I sold ceramics and painted ceramics and that was back in the 70s when it was a big deal. Okay? Uh, where Smith Malock and P is now on Oak Street. That was his, that was his place. And uh, he um, was wonderful at creating beautiful art out of ceramics. And we have some at my mom's house that he, that he held on to. He sold some things and held on to some things. He was fantastic at that. But you don't know it because he limited himself. And we didn't reap the benefits of the talent that God gave my dad because he limited himself. My dad could have sold a bunch of art. My dad was a great writer. Some of y'all might not like this stuff. Zane was so good to me. He brought me uh, the last thing that he, the last uh, thing he presented to the seminar producer. And he found it in a desk drawer. It's in my office now. The last, the last, uh, the last article he wrote, I'm a 31 model. My dad was a great writer. And it wasn't until he was 80 years old that he decided that he, could, he was good enough to be published in the paper. It's a long time to wait. My dad was a great, great guy. But my dad never thought he was good enough. He never had the confidence to do what he was called to do. And I fight that and I battle that every day. I got a lot of things from my dad. One bad thing I got from my dad was that. Because I fight and battle that. Oh, anybody can do that. No, baby, not anybody can do that. No. Not everybody can do what you can do. So let me ask you this. If you limit yourself, are you really limiting you? Or are you saying, God, you can't do that? That's right, amen. Are you really limiting you? No, we're saying, God, I know you're all powerful. You're all everything. God, I know you can do everything. But God, you can't use me to do that because I'm not good enough. And God, you can't make me good enough. You can't make me good enough. I, you must hit me. God, you're barking up the wrong tree. God, you called the wrong person. I don't know what you're smoking, God, but this is the wrong thing. Because right now, I don't think that I, I, I can't. God, you can't use me in that capacity. How do you know what God can do in that Billy Graham was from North Carolina. Nobody knew who Billy Graham was. Do you know who he is now? Almost everybody in the world has heard of Billy Graham in the Christian circles. If you haven't, you've been asleep for a decade or two. He didn't know who, he, listen, nobody knew who Billy Graham was until Billy Graham became Billy Graham. Nobody knew who Oral Roberts was. He came from Center, Oklahoma. That's a metropolis. <laughs> you got to drive through there every now and then. There's an oil center or center, one of the two, whichever. And they're both about the same size. It doesn't matter. You can yeah. see all the way through town. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I don't remember which one it was. Down in Pottertalk County somewhere, okay? Nobody knew who Oral Roberts was. He had a death certificate that they had signed because he had tuberculosis. And he's coughing up chunks of his lungs. And God healed him. Amen. He had a death certificate already when he was, I don't know, 
15, 16 years up on work. Hmm. In that area. Oh, Roberts, nobody knew who he was. But you know what? He didn't put limits on what God could do through him. Right. He believed that God could do whatever he can do. I believe that Billy Graham just believed, God, I don't know what you're doing, but let's go. Let's go to Shea Stadium and let's fill this sucker up. And let's have 10,000 people get saved. Right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's have, let's have uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, Vincent Peel. What's his name? That's him. And you can see the songs, man. Not my style. I don't know what song he sang, but that's how he sang it. Okay? And that's what he did. But he didn't. Hey, Brian Jackson. But he didn't limit himself. He did not allow people to put limitations on what he could do. And we, what we do is we say, well, I grew up and they told me I couldn't do this and they told me I couldn't do that and, and I, I've been beat down to tell, I, I'm, I'm just, man, I'm just me and, and, and then I've been beaten back and beaten back and beaten back. Yeah, that's true. You probably have been. But here's the deal. What did God say about you? I have called you. I have chosen you. I Stand up and be what I've called you to be. Listen, it may, listen, put my scripture back up there, First John 3 and 2, so I don't quote it wrong again. Okay. Up there. Beloved, now you are the sons of God, and nothing yet appear what you shall be. But what we know that when we shall see him, when he shall appear, we shall see him as he is. And he he listen, I don't know who you think you are, but that person in the mirror is not who you are. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every time you look in the mirror, you go. I can't do this. But God doesn't see that. God sees the potential inside of you. God sees what's going on inside of you. Listen, you can be you can be all down in the dumps if you want to be, but God has a plan for you. And you cannot never achieve it. And God, when you get to heaven, God was like, what was the hold up? All this stuff I had for you. All this stuff. And you refuse to use any of it. Church, can I, can I just share with you just a, just a few things, and I'm going to cut you loose in just a minute, but listen to me. When we refuse to do what God has called us to do, you know what weighs in the balance? People, we are supposed to reach for Christ. Come on. God, I can't do that. It's too hard. It's too big. It's too much. Yeah. Really? God's potential. When you see yourself as unable, you tell God that He's failed in calling you to the task at hand. God, I can't do this. I'm not able. I'm, I'm unwilling. I, I can't do it. Yes, you can. In Ephesians 3 and 20. Please put that up for me. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now unto Him that is able to do exceedingly above all we can ask Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think according to the power that works in us. I can't do it. I'm uh, not able to. No. I just can't. It's just too hard. No, what's too hard is the fear that comes from not knowing what you're doing. And just say, God... I don't know how you're going to do this, but whatever. Do it. God, I don't know how you're going to repair my relationship. But repair it. God, I don't know what you're going to do financially for my life, but God, you're going to have to do it. Guys, can I just share with you how many times has God delivered you Financially, we go right back to the same thing again and again and again because we are ignorant of how to handle the finances that I'm using. Mm -hmm. I'm not picking on you. I'm just asking you. Yeah. I'm not picking on you. I'm not telling you you're an idiot. I'm just saying that we just don't, we don't know how to handle it. We we get our income tax money back, or some of y'all do, and and next thing you know, you're broke again. Yep. Good for you. Yeah, $6,000 two weeks ago, you're broke because you had to buy... A, a new game system. 
God, God gave you money to pay off your debt. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell it is amazing. Just say, don't, please don't get angry with me about it. Do what you want to your own stupid money. I don't care. God's trying to build a church. God's trying to build a building. Yes. You know, if we did what car lots do, there would be such an uproar. Bring your W 2s in here, man. We're gonna we're gonna do your taxes for you. We'll set up a table in the back, baby. We'll take that resurrection offering right off the top. If we did that, there would be an article in the paper how we are such terrible, awful thieves and robbers that we are taking advantage of people. But you can do it at any car lot. So they can give you a car you can't afford and payments just made for you. Can you imagine if we put a tax thing in here like Walmart does? Yeah. I don't think I haven't thought of it. <laughs> just saying. We'll take 10% of your return. That's right. To, for doing your tax? It's better nation our block will do for you. Yeah, yeah. We'll do them right. <laughs> hey, so, <laughs> you never know when you get to nation our block. They were selling them at the garden center last week at Walmart. Now they're a tax expert at nation our block. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. So, do whatever you want to do. But can you imagine if the church did that? Oh! Blasphemy! Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. First he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but this heart is not with thee. Verse, go, go to verse 6, I get a little bit of context. But thank you. He thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Keep going. For he think in his heart, so is he. If you think how you think you are, that is how you are. How do you how do you think of yourself? Well, I'm just a tortilla guy. I'll never have. I'll never, never, I'll never, oh, I'll never. Whatever, prophet, you keep prophesying. Right. Keep telling yourself that. Right. I'll never get out of debt. Yeah, you won't. I'll never have enough money to do that. No, you won't. You won't. Because you're prophesying into your life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe in that. I don't care. Still the truth. The tongue. I don't really remember. First message I ever preached to this church was shut your mouth. You're snared by the by the words of your mouth. The first message I ever preached to this church. October 1993. October 93. Shut your mouth. I've never learned from my own lessons. But I've tried. As you think you are, that is how you are. If you call yourself blessed, you are blessed. Amen. I just say weird. But I am blessed. In every aspect of my life, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. A song. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. Amen. God has blessed me beyond measure. He's given me more than I ever deserved. Thank you, Lord. He cares for me more than, he, than I ever needed to be cared for. He loves me more than, he deserve, than I deserve for him to love me. He cares for me. I think I've used this before, but I, I thought it fit, it fit good here or fitted good here. Charles Schultz said this. How many know who Charles Schultz is? Peanuts. Life is a 10 speed bike. Most of us have gears we've never used. K 
can't get up this mountain, shift the gear. I can't get up this hill, shift the gear. I need to go faster, shift the gear. I need to slow down, shift the gear. Charles Schwab, everybody know who Charles Schwab is? We're getting all the advice from Chucks today. When a man has put a limit on what he will do, he has to put a limit on what he can do. Pretty smart. When a man will put a limit on what he will do, he has put a limit on what he can do. It's pretty smart. Your potential is really up to you. Church, I have an integral part of this as being the pastor of this church. And I know that. But hear me. This church's mindset has got to flip. We cannot continue in the good enough mindset. Well, you're putting legalism on us. No, 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 no. No. I'm trying to raise your standard a little higher. I'm trying to get you to look to the next level. I'm trying to get you to not... Um, I'm trying... I'm trying to get you out of 1995. Okay? What worked in 1995 does not work in 2020. I'm sorry, people are different. What worked in our time period back in the day doesn't work today if you're out trying to reach people from this generation. What does work is Jesus. Yes. What does work is the, is the message of the cross. What does work is that. That's true. Very true. But what doesn't work is, I ain't went to no bar. You know what this wood built, built that church with? Yeah. I got some ceiling fans out of the barn. Y'all want them? No. No. I don't. Thank you for playing. We'll sell them. Mark will sell them. We'll make 20 bucks a piece off of them and put it in the offer. Thanks. And I understand that the intent is good. I get it. I understand that. And the reason being is because I grew up in a poor church. When we had to take up special offerings to pay the insurance payment, which was not that high. Amen. Two hundred dollars a week to operate on. Holy cow! I can't operate a day and a half on two hundred dollars. We spend two hundred dollars at Sam's. Why? Because we give out foods, we give out cups and bowls and plates and forks and knives and spoons. And paper towels and yeah. light bulbs and toilet paper and mm -hmm. this is crazy, yeah. And wrap and everything. And little little uh, to go trays and man, we spend two hundred dollars a month at Sam's. No, we don't spend more than that. It <laughs> averages about two hundred dollars a week probably at Sam's. Why? Because we give out food, yeah. chili, cheese, nachos. Hot dog things. Those things aren't given to us for free because we're good, sweet people. People actually have to expect us to pay for those. It's amazing. It's amazing. Two hundred. I forgot about that. Two hundred dollars a week. What we need to? Uh, we need two hundred dollars a day to operate. We do. We need two hundred dollars a day to operate. On. Because we do stuff, man. Yeah. We do stuff. And so the mentality has got to flip. Yeah. Yes, it's got to change. We have to reach our potential. Yes. Church, I believe with all my heart, this is our last chance. Yes. We have been told over years and years and years and years and years and years that God is this and this and that and that about this church. And I believe with all my heart, this is our chance. This is our opportunity. The windows are wide open. The doors are wide open. This is our opportunity. The fields are wide to harvest. Yep. Why you say there's three months until harvest? And that, 
Why say there's three months until harvest? And you look up right now and see the, the fields are white, ready to harvest, but the laborers are few. Yeah. But I don't know how to harvest. Mm. Mm. Your potential is really up to you. It doesn't matter what others think about you. It matters what you think about, what God says about you. It doesn't matter where you came from. Where did you come from? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you used to think about yourself. What did you used to think about yourself? Oh, I'm just a drug addict. Oh, I'm just an alcoholic. Oh, I'm just this, I'm that. It doesn't. Stop it. That's not who you are. That's who you were. That's where you came from. That's not where you're going. That's not who you are. Get out of that mentality of, that's just, no, I, I just have to pay that price. No, he paid the price. That's not, this is, that is not up to you to carry. That is not yours to carry, honey. That is not yours to carry. You, you are carrying things that don't belong to you. Drop them and go forward with God. You are carrying things that God has already delivered you from. God, Jesus died on a cross for you to, to deliver you. And what happens is this. You say, yeah, I know Jesus did that, but i got to help him. No, you don't need to help him. That's right. Amen. He's already, it's already under the blood. It's already gone. It's, it's a, that's not who you are. You are a child. Can you do this? Do something for me. Do something for me. Open your Bible. Or open your app. Or do both. Got close enough? Put put a Bible scripture up there. I don't care which one you put up. Open it. What does this say you are? I'm a child of the king. Yes. I'm a chosen, get yourself up. I'm a chosen generation. Amen. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a peculiar person, not because I'm weird, but because he's chosen me. Yes. And I react differently. Yep. I walk differently. I talk differently. Yes. I do things differently. I, I'm, not, I'm, not the, I'm not the same person I used to be. <clears throat> Listen, I don't cuss like I used to cuss. Not because I'm afraid God's going to send me to hell without an air conditioner. Because I just don't want to. I don't, I listen, I don't sleep with whoever I wanted to sleep with. That because, not because I think God's going to send me to hell with, without an air conditioner. But because I just don't want to. I don't want to live like hell anymore. Right. Amen. I'm not that person anymore. Quit looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, oh, that's just who I am. Amen. That's a lie of the devil. Amen. That is not who you are. Amen. That is not who you are. I don't care who tells you that. If you're in this house and you're saved, God has transformed your life. You are changed from the inside to the outside. You are up and not down. You are blessed and not cursed. Come on, somebody, help me a minute. You are, you are not simply that person that... Everybody can dump on it anymore. You're not that poor man anymore. You're not that, that they can wipe their feet on you and walk around you and talk about anything you want. Then so that's not who you are. I'm a child of the king. I'm a royal priesthood. He loves me. I, I dare say that most people that sit in churches don't get that. The preacher loves me, great. My, my daughter loves me, great. My, my wife loves me, great. But most people in the church don't ever understand that God so loved you. Right. Not just the world. Are you part of it? I'm in it, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not of it, but I'm in it. Okay, whether you believe the world's flat around, okay, whatever, you're in it. I believe he loves me. Yes. Take your finger, put it in your chest. But right there. Yes. God loves me. Yes. He loves me. Yes. Get that in your spirit. Thank you. Quit to let people tell you that he don't love you. Right. Quit letting people tell you that you're not worthy. Yes. Quit letting your, son, your own spirit tell you you're not good enough. Yes. Quit, letting, quit letting your own mind play tricks with you. Right. Oh, I'm not good enough because I can't keep from sinning. Oh, listen. Listen, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, here's the deal. If you'll just give your life to Christ, listen, you're going to fall down and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to skin yourself up and you're going to bleed and you're going to limp. Amen. Yeah. But as long as you keep walking forward. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Keep walking forward. Yeah. Get up. 
Quit laying in your in your little squalor and say, oh, oh, I, I can't do it. Oh, I'm just so weak. I can't do it. Oh, so. And God's like, get off! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, He's your biggest cheerleader. He's got pom-poms and everything. Yeah. Yeah, get off! Yes. Yeah. Get up! Yeah. Oh, God, I can't. Yes. He takes his staff and picks you up! Yeah. Get up! Yeah. He's the good shepherd! He picks you up and gets you up on your feet. And you go, man. Because <laughs> we're sheep. And he takes us to green pastures. He leads us beside what? Still waters. Not the stinky one either in north. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I love you, Zach. <laughs> So, never mind. Okay. That was for Zank, because I love Zank. Um, you too, Steve. Okay. Aaron's not here. Okay, so here. Listen. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David, again, it's not this guys. Get off my messages. Um, Psalm, Psalm 23. Put it up on the screen for me. 23rd Psalm. 23rd. 1 through 6, I think. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Psalm 23. Michael Jordan Psalm. There you go. All right. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. He's got me covered. Yes. I shut up one. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Yes. Verse 3. He restores my soul. Come on. Yes. He restores my soul. Uh, don't just read through that and don't go, what is that? That's okay. He gives me rest. No. Restores not just rest. He brings it back into alignment with Him. Yeah. He restores my soul. It's not just rest. He brings it back into agreement with Him. He restores my soul. He leads me beside the, uh, in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Don't just skip over that. Just so you can say you read the 23rd Psalm. What does it say? He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Why? Not for my sake, but for His name's sake. He loves you so much. He leads you in paths of righteousness so He can be glorified in you. Right. Oh, somebody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 4. Verse 4. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not the valley of death. Shadow. The shadow. 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 Amen. There you go. Say it. Say it louder. Yeah, he said you're walking through it, not stuck in it. Amen. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff. They comfort me. How does a rod and a staff comfort me? Listen, I don't fear any evil because he is my shepherd. And he will fight off anything he can. And if I fall down, he picks me up. If I get out of alignment, he whacks me and gets me straight. I just, he, his staff comforts me. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh my goodness, I can preach an entire series about this. But I'm not. He prepares a table before me. What does that mean? I eat... In the presence of those who tell me I don't deserve it. Amen. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Don't have time to go there, David. We can do that in Sunday school. Verse 6. Surely. Someone said, for sure. 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 It is. It is written down, going to happen. You can't stop it from happening. Sure. Devil, I don't know who you think you are, but Amen. surely. This, it doesn't matter who. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. 
Well, I'm not good enough. Wait a minute. Surely. Yes. Surely. Yes. I'm not smart enough. I understand that, but surely. Yes. I will dwell in the house of the Lord where? Forever. Forever. How long? Forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I am not, you can't run me out of the house of the Lord. You can't make me stop coming to the house of the Lord. You can't hurt my feelings enough to stop me from going to the house of the Lord. You can't make it. Why? Because surely goodness and mercy will follow me for all the days of my life and I will dwell. I'm going to dwell. You can't dwell without a well. What does that mean? To dwell somewhere, you've got to dig a well. You can't dwell without a well. And I will dwell, I will dig a well, I will put up a, a habitation, I'm moving in. I'm moving in to the house of the Lord. Not because I think you're cool, not because I love you, not because you're cute, not because you're building a new building, but I'm going to move in there forever because it's the house of the Lord. It is His house. I'm going to dwell. I'm going to dig me a well. And I'm going to dwell. I'm going to live there for the rest of my life. I'm going to, you can't run me out. This is my habitation. Why? Because I'm a king's kid. It's my daddy's house. You can't make me move. You can't force me out. Listen, whenever, listen, when, I, I just, when everybody else has to stand up for the king, I get to stand in his presence, but I also get to sit and rest in front of him. Come on, Come on somebody. I gotta stop. Great job. I gotta stop. Go back to verse 4 and I'll leave you alone. I think it's 4. Yeah. Yea, yes, I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It may look like there's no way out this time, it may look like all hell is breaking loose, and I'm going down for the count. It may look like nobody cares about me and God has forsaken me. Okay. Just give you one more thing about the valley. Just one more thing. If there's a shadow, there has to be a light. Amen. There's no shadows in the dark. Amen. If there's a shadow, there's got to be a light behind it. When that light shines, I may be, I may look like I'm going down, but I'm not going down. I may look like I'm in trouble, but I'm not in trouble. Why? I fear no evil, for thou art with me, because your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I may look like I'm not there. I may look like I've fallen for the last time. It may look like it's over for me. It's dark and it's black and there's shadows of death all around me. But what I have to remember is, if there's a shadow, there has to be a light. God. There has to be a light. There is no way, no way, I'm going to stop in that valley. Why? Have you ever been? Have you guys ever been to, to mountains where it doesn't get daylight until like 10 o'clock in the morning? Because you're in a valley. Have you ever gone to Alaska? Uh, Wasilla was the worst. It always looked like it was going to rain to me. Because there's mountains all the way around it. Just sitting in a, in a, in a, in a whatever, sit, whatever, whatever valley. Is it a valley? And there's mountains all the way around it. So it always looked to me like, you know, when thunderstorms are coming here and you can see them, that's what it looked like all the time. And it didn't get daylight until like 10 o'clock because by the time the sun came up over the mountains, it was 10 o'clock. It was kind of dark. The sun would come up. I know that it looks dark. The sun's coming up. Well, the sun should have been up. It's nine, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Why is the sun shining on me? It's still coming. The mat suit, well, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. You have to keep walking toward the sun. The shadows get longer as the sun's coming out. But when that sun goes... Boom! The shadows are now behind you. Come on, somebody. The shadows are now because the sun is shining on you and you're casting a shadow. 
The shadows don't stay with the sunglasses. Come on, somebody. You have to keep walking toward that sun. Keep walking. Here we, here we go, and I'll wrap it up. You have to believe in your potential. Amen. Believe in who you are. Well, I ain't nobody. No. You're not until God makes you somebody. I'm just nobody. I can do all things. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can't make it on my own. I can't walk this path by myself. And I can't hang on by myself. I'll let go. But God strengthens me. Have you ever been there when you had a tie off the end of the rope yeah. Yeah. through a hurricane? Yeah. You scrapped yourself to a palm tree yeah. in the middle of a hurricane. You just hang on, hoping nothing flies and knocks you out. I'm not yet what I shall be, but this is what I am. You have to believe in the God in you. Not just believe in yourself, but the God in you. If you're in this house this morning, this evening, and you're not saved, nothing I preach to you matters one hill of means. Because until you're saved, you're in danger. You're in danger. Danger of spending an eternity without, without God. Danger of spending an eternity lost. In a devil's hell, being an intruder in hell. You're not, you're not supposed to be in hell. God did not make hell for all the bad people. Hell was made for the devil and a third of the angels. You're an intruder if you go to hell. You don't belong there. You're not supposed to be there. God made provision for you not to go to hell. He made provision by sitting his son on a tree and crucifying him. He became our sin. You see, you understand that when God saw Jesus on the cross, he didn't see his son, he saw your sin. Man. What a God. What a God. He didn't see me, he saw my sin and crucified. He took my place. Because I deserved to be crucified, but I didn't get that, but he did. Amen? Amen. That's you this evening. If you don't know Jesus, I would love to pray for you. If you've raised your hand, I'm not going to embarrass you and drag you down to the altar and sit on you and, and, and lock the door so you can't get out. We just want to pray with you. We just want to pray with you. Cool. If all hearts are clear, then let me ask you this question. Who are you? A child of the King. A child of God. It's not going to appear what I shall be, what I am right now, I'm a son of God. When I see him and he does appear, I'll see him like I like, like he is, and I'll be just like him. Amen. 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 We're going to receive this offering tonight. This offering.